Hey guys, Constance here. So I just thought I would come out here on the back porch and um, <laughs> have a mug of tea. So Mr. Smith and I are getting ready to run a couple of errands, but before we do that, I thought I would come out here and just talk about something that a couple of very astute subscribers have noticed and that is that we are no longer using the electric poultry fencing and people have wondered you know why did we stop doing that did it quit working what was the reasoning behind that and so i thought i would just explain um, basically why we stopped using it uh, first of all if you're not familiar with what poultry netting is, electric poultry netting, it's essentially an electric fence that is movable. It's easy to move, it's easy to install unless you have extreme drought conditions and have hard clay soil like we do out here. Um, when things get very dry we have to pound it in with a, a piece of wood or a mallet and um, yeah, it makes it a little bit difficult, uh, particularly because our soil will just, it'll be as hard as concrete in the summertime or when it's, you know, a lot of drought, very dry. But for most people who have decent soil, uh, it installs in minutes, it's super easy to use, and it is a great uh, resource if you need to have some sort of fencing to keep animals in and to keep predators out most predators so when i started the homestead here uh, to begin with we had our chickens in a little run just because they were kind of small and then they graduated to being out inside an electric fence the electric poultry fencing and i would move that around the stationary coop which was the original coop that i had built now over time, we had other coops. I built the movable chicken sled, the A-frame chicken coop. And so we had multiple fences that we were dealing with. But then eventually it got to where we were just using the fencing at night to keep animals away from the coop. And we were letting the chickens free roam all day long. And it, <laughs> I realized, why am I doing this? Why am I creating all of this work when we're just letting the chickens out anyways? And so basically the reason we stopped using it was for efficiency. We were letting the chickens free roam and so there was really no point in creating the extra work for us to be moving the fence, you know, every so often for new ground when they had access to everything anyways. So at this point, the only electric fencing that we are using is the smaller um, eight section fence that we put around the rabbit tractors, which at the moment are, is laying on the ground. You can see the rabbit tractors right back there. I just moved them and I have to put the fence back up around it. Um, it only takes a few minutes. Like I said, it, it's very simple to install. Um, I still love the the electric poultry netting. The version that I have is made by uh, Premier One. I think it is a great fencing. All of the fencing sections that I have purchased are still working great. The only issue I have had was early on, I had an instance where uh, I had forgotten to plug the fence back in or, or I had forgotten to reconnect the fencing after I moved it. And uh, one evening, an animal tried to chew its way through the fence. Now, had that fence been connected, of course, it would have gotten a zap and that would have been all she wrote for that animal. It, it would have taken off because every horizontal cable or, or piece of wire is electrified. So it's a, it's a very thorough electric fencing. But... I had accidentally not hooked it up and so an animal tried to chew its way in it, it wasn't able to but you could see where it had tried and so I had to repair it when you order those fences they do come with repair kits it's just in case something happens and I easily repaired it and made sure from that point on that we kept it nice and uh, securely connected 
So I know people will probably be asking, well, if you were using that fencing to keep out predators, why aren't you worried about it now? The fact of the matter is, most of the predators that that electric fencing would keep out are animals that would come around at night. And we have all of our chickens securely put up at night. I have the shutters, I have the doors. They all have two ways of latching. They, they have a normal swivel latch, primitive version, and then they have a locking latch as well to keep um, nimble fingered raccoons from being able to open them. So we still lose animals to predators. And unfortunately, most of the time we're dealing with animals that aren't going to be stopped by an electric poultry fence. Things like a hawk, or an owl, or a bobcat that could easily leap over one of those fences. And I'm sure has, uh, we have had animals just completely vanish from inside that hot fence and gone without a trace. So we just felt like all we were doing at this point was creating extra work for ourselves. And I'm all about efficiency and about doing things in a streamlined way to not waste time or energy. And I felt that continually, unnecessarily moving that poultry fencing was extra work and extra time and could be used elsewhere. So that is why we've stopped using it. Um, it really seemed like there was really no point considering we let the chickens run loose anyways. So I still highly recommend the Premier One fencing that we used. I still think it's fantastic. I haven't gotten rid of it. I still have it because I'm sure there will be periods where we will use it again. Uh, for instance, when we have new chicks that we incorporate into the coop, I will use the electric fencing to create an area for them so that they can be contained while they are still young and to keep them from roaming too far away. Um, and I feel that that will come in handy at that point until at least they're full sized. I don't have anything negative that I could say about that fencing um, other than for us when the soil is concrete hard it can be a challenge to install it um, but otherwise it is fantastic fencing and I still recommend it if you are needing to create a barrier um, to keep animals in or animals out. And then one last thing before Mr. Smith and I go and run our errands, the little clip that you saw at the very beginning of this video where I was using a coffee grinder, that is my trick for making my own homemade spice mixes from the dried herbs and peppers and everything in the garden. Um, a bladed coffee mill, which you can get really cheap. I mean, you could get a new one for about 10 bucks at, at you know, Walmart or something. Uh, very inexpensive. You can get them off of Amazon. Uh, they are fantastic for grinding up your spices, whether they are herbs or whether they are dried peppers. Uh, it's very, very handy. I was refilling my spice jar that I had of the red pepper flakes. Now, red pepper flakes are basically your hot red peppers, like your cayenne pepper. So the version that I made was a little bit of an in-between, um, kind of a little more fine than the red pepper flakes that you would buy at the store, but definitely much more coarse than the ground cayenne pepper. So. It's a good way of making your own spices and reutilizing your harvest from the garden throughout the year. And a lot of people wonder how you would go about cleaning that coffee mill after you've ground something like a spicy hot pepper. Very simply, throw a little bit of dry rice in there. The dry rice will absorb the oils from the pepper and it will also serve as an abrasive to get everything loose from the inside of the coffee mill. Then I just dump it out and wipe it all out with a clean rag or a paper towel. And that is it. It's ready to go for the next thing that you want to grind up. Now I do not use that coffee mill for grinding coffee. I only use that for grinding herbs and peppers and things like that. So 
I hope that is helpful to those of you out there um, who want to maybe make your own spice blends. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. So that is it. Thanks for hanging out with me here on the back porch. My name is Constance, and I will talk to you all next time. Thank you.